Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim my dear students how you folks are doing and today i will discuss the romantic period or or the age of romanticism or the romantic revival and you know the time span of romantic age is uh 34 years the the romantic period begins with the publication of lyrical ballads in the year 1798 and it was a collaborative work by william wordsworth and samuel taylor coleridge and and this class that is the romantic the romantic period and and the main features that um covers the romantic period will 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 come under the purview of my discussion and and you have already known that the time span of romantic period is 34 years and it begins with the publication of lyrical ballads in the year 1798 and it it ends in the year 1832 and some people say it ends in 1837 uh with the beginning of victorian age that is th that is in my today's class i will mainly tell you the salient characteristics of romanticism and i will begin with the definition of uh, romanticism and let me begin my telling you the definition with leguiz and kezamian who defines the romantic spirit as an accentuated predominance of emotional life provoked or directed by the exercise of imaginative vision what danton defines romanticism as the renaissance of wonder ever crombi defines that romanticism is a withdrawal from outer experience to concentration on inner experience hains beers and fells uh define romanticism as the reawakening of the middle ages and romanticism generally speaking is the expression in terms of art of sharpened sensibilities and heightened imaginative feelings emotion and imagination are the bedrock of romanticism without flights of imaginative sensibility we may have anything else except romanticism further the romantic takes the readers to far up places in the middle ages and introduces uh us to a world of strangeness and beauty it is the combination of strangeness added with beauty that we have the essence of the romantic spirit peter considered the romantic character in art as consisting in the addition of a strangeness to beauty the desire of beauty continues peter being a fixed element in every artistic organization it is the addition of curiosity to the desire of beauty that constitutes the romantic temper thus the two prominent elements of romanticism are curiosity and beauty they are integral factors in romanticism the one intellectual the other emotional further qualities of romanticisms further qualities of romanticism are a subtle sense of mystery and an exuberant intellectual curiosity and an instinct for the elemental simplicity of life romanticism stands for freedom and liberty and has therefore been de designated as 
liberalism in literature. It stands for freedom from all kinds of bondage, of rules and regulations, and lifts its readers in free delights of their romantic fancy. It paves the way for wonder and delight, and heralds the dawn of a new way of looking at life, not the way of orderliness, clarity and tranquility, but the way of exuberance and emotional enthusiasm. The Renaissance, the first hint of romantic period in English literature, the supreme romantic movement in English letters was the Renaissance, said by one literary historian. It, it had brought about a transformation not only in English but also in European life. It was followed by a reaction in which classicism with its in insistence on reason and logic, order and sanity, passionlessness and tranquility held the supreme sway. Then came the romantic revival in the beginning of the 19th century completely throwing overboard the values that were held dear by the classic classicists headed by Alexander Pope. A new stimulus was given to art and literature and poetry of the and the poetry of the age witnessed a complete breakaway from the traditions and usages are filled by the pseudo classicists of the former age. And let me, my dear students, now tell you the salient features or characteristics of the Romantic poetry. And uh, the first one is break from the set rules. The poetry of the Romantic Revival is in direct contrast to the characteristics cultivated by the 18th century new classical poets. In the 18th century, poetry was governed by set rules and regulations. There were well chalked out lines of poetic composition and any deviation from the uh, beaten track was frowned at by mentors and poetic thought. The first thing that we have in the poetry of the new ways is the break from slavery of rules and regulations. The romantic movement was marked by, marked and is always marked, says William Zelong by a strong reaction and protest against the bondage of rules and custom, which in science and theology, as well as in literature, generally tend to fetter the free human, human spirit. And number two characteristics uh, or characteristic of ro romantic poetry is interest in country life. Poetry in the 18th century was concerned with clubs and coffee houses, drawing rooms and the social and political life of London. It was essentially the poetry of town life. Nature had practically no place in classical poetry. In the poetry of the Romantic Revival, the interest of poets was transferred from town to country life and from the artificial decorations of drawing rooms to the natural beauty and loveliness of nature. Nature began to have its own importance in the poetry of the Romantic Age. And Wordsworth was the supreme poet who revealed the physical and spiritual beauty of nature. To those who could not see any charm in the wild flowers, the green fields and the chirping birds. Thus, in the poetry of the Romantic Revival, we have an added jest and interest among poets to discard the glamorous to discard the glamours of an artificial life and return to the elemental simplicity, simplicities of life, lived in closer touch and contact with the beauties and charm of nature. Now let me tell you an, about another aspect of Romantic poetry and that is presentation of common life. Romantic poets started taking interest in the lives of the common people, the shepherds and the Cortezers and left the gallant lords and gay butterflies of fashion to the care of novelists. A renewed interest in simple life marked the poetry of the poets of the age. A feeling of humanitarianism colored the poetry of Wordsworth, Shelley, and Byron. 
Thus, romantic poetry was marked by intense human sympathy and a consequent understanding of the human heart. And let me tell you about another wonderful aspect of the romantic poetry and that is love of liberty and freedom. In romantic poetry, emphasis was laid on liberty and freedom of the individual. And this very aspect was greatly inf influenced by the French Revolution. Romantic poets were rebels against tyranny and brutality exercised by tyrants and despots over human beings, crushed by poverty and smashed by inhuman laws. In the poetry of these days, we have a note of rebellion and a crusade against effete conventions and worn out traditions. Freedom is the breath in which the romantic poets breathe freely. And my dear students, now I'll tell you about another very splendid uh, aspect of romantic poetry and that is escape to the Middle Ages. Some romantic poets felt shaved with the tyranny, squalor and ugliness of the materialistic life of their age. And to avoid this life of uneasy restlessness, they sought through their poetry and escape. And they, they sought through their poetry and escape from the carking cares and, and, and corroding anxieties of the world to a world of beauty and joy, which their poetic imagination had pictured and created. In many ways, romantic poetry proved to be the poetry of escape from the sorrows and sufferings of mundane life of their times to the Middle Ages, where they found enough beauty and joy to feed the waning flame of their souls. The essential elements of the romantic spirit, says Walter Pater, are curiosity and the love of beauty, and it is as the accidental effect of these qualities only that it seeks the Middle Ages because in the overcharged atmosphere of the Middle Ages there are unwrecked sources of romantic effect, of a strange beauty to be won by a strong imagination, out of things likely or remote. The enthusiasm for the Middle Ages satisfied the emotional sense of wonder on the one hand and the intellectual sense of curiosity on the other. And lot, let me now tell you about another very splendid uh, feature of romantic poetry and that is predominance of imagination and emotion. In romantic poetry, reason and intellect were subdued and their place was taken by imagination, emotion and passion. In the poetry of all the romantic poets of these days, we have the exhibition of heightened emotional sensibilities and imaginative flights of genius bordering on empyrean hearts, unscaled by the poets of the previous age. And now tell me about an important characteristic of romantic, romantic period and that is supernaturalism. Supernaturalism is another out, outstanding quality of romantic poetry. A sense of wonder and mystery was imparted to poetry by poets like Coleridge and Walter Scott. It was this supernatural note that gave to romantic poetry its atmosphere of wonder and mystery, uncanniness and an eerie feeling and justify the title The Renaissance of Wonder given to this poetic age by a critic of repute. And now let me tell about, a, about another aspect of romantic poetry that is note of Subjectivity. Subjectivity began to have its full play in the poetry of these days. The poets of this period are in favor of giving subjective interpretation to the objective realities of life. Romantic poetry became individualistic in outlook. The romantic movement, says William J. Long, was the expression of individual genius rather than of established rules. Or, as Lucas says that it was an expression of it, in other words, ego. And now let me tell you about another aspect of romantic poetry that is endless variety in romantic poetry. In romantic poetry, we come across endless variety. Poetry of these days is as varied as the character and moods of different writers. 
When we read Pope, po, for instance, we have a general interpretation of sameness. Says long, but in the wake of the best romanti, ro, ro, romanticis, romanticis, there is endless variety. To read them is like passing through a new village, meeting a score of different human types, and finding in each one something to love and to remember. And now let me tell you about lyricism, which is a very important romantic characteristic. Lyricism in ro romantic poetry, lyricism predominates and the poets of these schools have, have to their credit a number of fine lyrics excelling the heroic couplet of the classical age in melody and sweetness of tone. And, and now let me tell about the last characteristic of the romantic poetry, the simplicity, simplicity in style. The style of the romantic poets is varied. Greater stress is laid on simplicity instead of the inflated and artificial mode of expression adopted by the classical poets. In romantic poetry, we have a more natural diction and a spontaneous way of expressing thoughts. And I hope that uh, you, uh, you, my dear students, have uh, have listened uh, to to my lecture up till this po this point and listen listened uh, very joy joyously uh, to uh, to what I I have told you uh, I have told you about the characteristics of the romantic poetry and and let me now uh, wrap up my. Uh, discussion by saying in consonance with, with William J. Long uh, who, who said that the poetry of the Romanticism is characterized by the protest against the bondage of rules, the return to nature and, and the human heart, the interest in old sages and medieval romances as suggestive of a heroic age, the sympathy with the twilights of the world. The emphasis upon individual genius and the return to Milton and to El El Elizabethans instead of to Pope and Dryden for literary models. And, and we, with these few things, I would like to wrap up my discussion for today and thank you very much, my dear, my dear students.